All right. Uh, so on the research blog earlier this week, we published an article about a new web threat called HTTP3 connection contamination. And I was trying to think of some kind of beer analogy uh, to make this make sense and nothing really stuck. And then I realized, actually, this attack is so simple. It doesn't need an analogy. I can just explain it in the full technical details in one slide in four minutes, and it will make perfect sense to everybody. So we're going to start off with a HTTP history lesson. HTTP is the language that Burp and also web browsers like Chrome and Firefox speak to websites. And every HTTP message is sent over a connection. You don't really need to worry about what a connection actually is. You only need to know one thing, which is that creating a connection is slow. So the, one, the original standardized version of HTTP was called 1.0. It came out in 96 and each message was sent over its own unique connection. And everything was nice and secure and wonderful. But then people were like, well, this is too slow. We want to make this go faster. And so they thought, well, what if we start sending multiple messages over each connection, provided that all the messages are going to the same website? And that was formalized in HTTP 1.1 in 96. And it definitely made things faster. And it also introduced a terrible vulnerability called request smuggling, which has been making hackers happy ever since. And well, we've been using HTTP 1.1 for a long time. A large portion of the web, of the web still uses 1.1 and is still vulnerable to request smuggling. But eventually, they figured out how to stop request smuggling. And they put it in HTTP 2. And that solved request smuggling, more or less. But they couldn't resist also trying to make things a little bit faster. And they said, OK, why don't we start using a single connection for multiple different websites, as long as those websites are closely related to each other? And yep, sure enough, that made things faster. But it also introduced a new vulnerability called HP connection contamination. The reason that this happens is that ooh, ever since 97 or earlier, websites have been able to assume that all the requests sent over a single connection were intended for the same website. And some of them just started taking that for granted. And so now the browsers have started suddenly sending messages for different websites down the same connection. The end result is the server doesn't realize this and it ends up going to the wrong website. Now, you might be thinking, well, if we just publish this technique and that change happened in 2015, like, why is there that big gap? And the answer is, well, because the websites have to be closely related to each other, this issue doesn't happen very much in practice. It does happen sometimes. That's how I found it, because someone blew up their website by accident with this and made an angry forum post. And I was like, hang on, there's a security issue here. Uh, but the story doesn't end there. Because, well, what's going to happen next? We're going to get HTTP 3, aren't we? And well, guess what it says in the specification for, our, for HTTP 3? It says, you know, we love connection reuse so much, we're going to relax this requirement so that the websites that we will speak to over one connection no longer need to share an IP. In other words, they no longer need to be closely related. And basically, it could happen to any two websites hosted by the same company. And what does that mean? Well, it means this issue that is currently extremely rare is just going to get worse in the near future. What's the real life impact of this? Well, basically, I'll, if you try and speak to a secure website owned by a company, someone may have hacked one of their insecure websites, and you may end up speaking to the one that's been hacked, and bad things are going to happen. And that is HP3 connection contamination. Thanks for listening.